The discussion revolves around the pivotal role that Michigan might play in the upcoming U.S. elections, particularly in relation to the candidates Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. The hosts, currently on a reporting journey through various cities in Michigan, engage in a dialogue that illustrates the diverse political sentiments among voters in this crucial battleground state. One of the key moments shared involves a conversation with a multi-generational family, which vividly illustrates the generational divides in political opinions. The grandmother is portrayed as a staunch supporter of Donald Trump, expressing confusion over how anyone could consider voting for Kamala Harris, while her grandson confidently asserts his decision to support Harris. This exchange highlights the stark contrast in political allegiance and the influence of familial ties on voter behavior, emphasizing how different generations perceive political candidates and issues. As the conversation progresses, the focus shifts to a significant and alarming event, an assassination attempt on Donald Trump. This incident has sparked discussions about the increasing risks of political violence, particularly in a climate where partisan divisions are especially pronounced. The hosts express their shock at the notion of two assassination attempts against Trump, which raises broader questions about the safety of public figures in the current political climate. They delve into the complexities of protecting Trump during his campaign events, particularly noting the logistical challenges faced by the Secret Service when securing expansive venues like golf courses. The challenges of establishing a secure perimeter in such settings are underscored, as golf courses are typically vast, open areas that complicate efforts to safeguard high-profile individuals. The discussion then transitions to the potential implications of such violence on the electorate. The hosts express concern about the possible emergence of copycat incidents and the overall atmosphere of fear surrounding the upcoming election. There is a palpable sense of anxiety regarding what might unfold on Election Day and in the days that follow, particularly if the results lead to widespread discontent or civil disorder. This contemplation resonates with viewers and listeners, prompting a deeper reflection on the stability of the democratic process amid escalating tensions. The dialogue takes a significant turn as the hosts explore the intersection of gender and race in the context of Harris's candidacy. A viewer's inquiry regarding the influence of these factors on the race prompts a thoughtful examination of how Harris's identity as a woman of color shapes her political narrative. The hosts note that while gender has played a notable role in this election cycle, Harris has consciously opted not to foreground her identity in the same way that Hillary Clinton did during her campaign in 2016. This decision raises interesting questions about the perceptions of female leadership and whether Harris's approach might resonate with voters who may harbor reservations about electing a woman to the presidency. Throughout the conversation, the hosts draw comparisons between Harris and Clinton, analyzing how each candidate has navigated the complexities of gender in their campaigns. While Clinton actively embraced her identity as a woman, Harris's strategy appears to be more measured, as she seeks to appeal to a broad spectrum of voters without being pigeonholed solely based on her gender. This choice may reflect an awareness of the lingering biases some voters hold, regardless of their gender. Race emerges as another critical theme, especially considering the heightened scrutiny that comes with Harris being the first woman of color on a major party ticket. The hosts address the dismissive rhetoric from some Republicans who have labeled Harris as a diversity hire, reflecting ongoing discussions about representation and meritocracy. Harris's response to these comments has generally been to redirect the conversation toward a more optimistic vision for the future, avoiding engagement with divisive narratives. The conversation also touches upon the evolving nature of polling data in Michigan, with both Harris and Trump appearing nearly tied in the latest surveys. This close contest underscores the importance of Michigan as a battleground state, and the potential for either candidate to secure a crucial victory that could influence the overall outcome of the election. The hosts emphasize the significance of voter sentiment in Michigan, particularly among marginalized communities that have historically supported Democrats but are now expressing dissatisfaction. In discussions with voters from predominantly Muslim neighborhoods, the hosts highlight a growing disillusionment with the Democratic Party. Many express feelings of neglect and frustration, indicating a willingness to explore alternative voting options, including support for Trump or third-party candidates like Jill Stein. The sentiment among these voters reflects a broader sense of disappointment with Biden and Harris's policies, especially regarding foreign relations and domestic issues that directly affect their communities. As the conversation draws to a close, the hosts emphasize the crucial stakes of the upcoming election, underscoring how deeply intertwined issues of race, gender, and economic inequality are shaping voter perspectives in Michigan. They reflect on the possibility of significant shifts in allegiance as the election approaches, noting the urgency of addressing the concerns raised by voters. As the political landscape in Michigan continues to evolve in anticipation of the upcoming election, several key themes emerge that encapsulate the complexities of voter sentiment, security concerns, and the multifaceted nature of identity politics. The dialogue emphasizes how Michigan, as a pivotal battleground state, could ultimately influence the trajectory of the election and, by extension, the future of American governance. One of the most salient points highlighted in the conversation is the generational divide in political opinions, particularly within families. The interaction between the grandmother supporting Trump and her grandson, who backs Harris, underscores the shifting political allegiances among younger voters. This dynamic reflects a broader trend where younger generations increasingly prioritize issues such as social justice, climate change, and inclusivity, contrasting sharply with the more traditional values that some older voters may hold. As the electorate becomes more diverse and younger, 
candidates will need to engage with these evolving perspectives to resonate with a broader base. The conversation around security, particularly in light of the assassination attempts on Trump, raises critical questions about political violence and its implications for the electoral process. The hosts stress the urgent need for heightened security measures as the candidates navigate public appearances in an increasingly volatile environment. The concern about potential copycat incidents following high-profile threats speaks to a larger narrative about the normalization of political violence in the United States. Voter confidence in the safety of the electoral process is paramount, and any incidents of violence could further polarize the electorate and deter participation. A significant aspect of the discussion centers around Kamala Harris's identity as a woman of color and how this shapes her political campaign. Unlike Hillary Clinton, who actively leaned into her gender as a defining aspect of her candidacy, Harris has opted for a more nuanced approach, aiming to appeal to a broad demographic without being reduced to her gender alone. This strategy reflects a recognition of the challenges that women candidates often face in being judged primarily through the lens of their gender rather than their qualifications or policies. Moreover, the conversation underscores the need to consider race in discussions about representation. Harris's identity prompts a reevaluation of how voters perceive candidates of color and the biases that may influence their choices. The hosts highlight a growing disillusionment among traditionally Democratic voter bases, particularly in marginalized communities. Many voters express dissatisfaction with the current administration, feeling that their concerns are not adequately addressed. This discontent has led some to consider alternative candidates, including Trump and third-party options, which could fracture the Democratic vote in crucial states like Michigan. The shift in loyalty among these voters signals a critical challenge for the Democratic Party to reconnect with constituents who feel overlooked and ensure that their voices are heard in policy discussions. Economic issues remain a central theme in the election, with candidates framing their messages to appeal to working-class voters. Harris's approach to addressing economic inequality and her efforts to articulate a vision for job creation resonate with voters who feel left behind in an increasingly polarized economy. The contrast in economic messaging between Harris and Trump reflects broader ideological differences regarding government intervention, social programs, and economic recovery strategies. As voters weigh their options, the candidate that effectively addresses their economic concerns may ultimately secure their support. As the conversation reveals, Michigan is a critical battleground state, with polling data indicating a neck-and-neck -neck race between Harris and Trump. The fact that both candidates are closely matched suggests that every vote will matter significantly in determining the election outcome. The hosts emphasize that Michigan's electoral decisions could not only influence the national political landscape, but also serve as a barometer for broader trends across the country. The state's history of fluctuating allegiances, combined with its diverse population, makes it a key focus for both campaigns. The dialogue stresses the importance of community engagement and activism in shaping voter behavior. Voter mobilization efforts, particularly in underrepresented communities, will be essential in ensuring that concerns are addressed and that voices are amplified. Candidates who prioritize grassroots outreach and engage with voters on pressing issues may find greater success in garnering support. The host discussions with voters in Michigan highlight the necessity of listening to constituents and adapting campaign strategies to meet their needs. In conclusion, the conversation encapsulates the intricate and multifaceted dynamics at play in Michigan as the state gears up for a consequential election. The interplay of generational divides, security concerns, identity politics, and economic messaging creates a complex landscape that candidates must navigate thoughtfully. As voters increasingly demand representation and responsiveness from their leaders, the need for candidates to engage authentically and meaningfully becomes more pressing than ever. Michigan stands poised to be a decisive battleground in the upcoming election, and the decisions made by its voters will have lasting implications for the future of American democracy. This comprehensive overview highlights the critical themes and takeaways from the discussion, providing a deeper understanding of the factors shaping the political climate in Michigan and their potential impact on the upcoming elections. If you need further elaboration or additional points included, feel free to let me know.